Thank you. Thank you. The existing Cherry Street road alignment, as well as some city-owned lands to the east. Okay. So, so your your submission today is that that um, I guess it's an off ramp. That off ramp uh, basically cuts your lands in half, and your client will be seeking appropriate um, redress for those. And those costs have not been included in this. Uh, in um, as far as you know. They have not. I'm, I'm positive about that because I asked uh, the representative from Dillon last week. We only found out about this four weeks ago. There was no consultation uh, from the city or their representatives with respect to the EAA. As a result, we were not able to provide any cost information. He confirmed that they had developed none on their own. And how many acres of your land does it neuter? I beg your pardon? How many acres of your, of your client's land does it uh, neuter or compromise? A guesstimate yes. would be uh, probably three and a half to four acres that become under here green space. <laughs> right. And um, we have no idea yet because the design is not finalized what the injurious affection might be. Right. Okay. And uh, I think we, I think I know what you're going to say, but I'm going to ask it anyway. And the rough ballpark back of envelope value? Huge. Huge, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> well, that was clear. Okay, Councillor Fletcher, you're next. I had asked um, Mr. Bedford if the, con the studies had, any of the studies that were done had looked at the actual takedowns in other cities, in particular North American cities and if the congestion impact had been evaluated, and he indicated that he didn't think it had. Do you think that's a wise thing that we would be comparing uh, uh, expressways down to expressways down, rather than simply the time travel models that have been placed in front of us? We have described ourselves, and I'm speaking now as much as a citizen as anything, and I know we aspire to be a world-class city. And as a result, I think one of the things that we would be well advised to do is to look at what we view as our peer class, take some lessons from them, and yes, as a result, I would support the, and, and acknowledge the importance of looking to the experience of other, quote, world-class cities, end quote, and how they've managed. And whether or not when they embarked on their studies, how they measured that traffic, et cetera, because you're basically talking about peer reviewing uh, processes in, in a certain sense, not a... I, I think there's certainly lessons to be learned, whether it's a direct peer review, I wouldn't want to hazard a guess. But I did note with respect to, for example, the modeling and the like that was done uh, by the, um, to use uh, Councillor um, Carroll's uh, phrase, the CAA study, that the author of that study was also author of another study that talked about how the existing modeling being used by folks wasn't as good as what he prepared because his would improve timing of um, and um, movement of goods. So I guess all I'm saying is that everyone has an approach. All we're trying to do in looking ahead with those approaches, methodologies and the like is to get a good guesstimate and perhaps better um, instruction would come from the experience of other similar cities facing similar issues, so adding, as well as, of course, yes, what, adding that our own experience help. east of the river. Yes, and east of the river, adding our own experience in. And then the map that Councillor Mahevic had up had the, the ramps there, and earlier uh, someone spoke about the pedestrian experience in crossing the lake shore now. Mm -hmm. For the development of your lands, or the lands uh, for which you're speaking about here, if, if he could put that up again, we, oh, it's right there. I wonder if we can get the, could you? Oh, it's right up. Yep. So crossing the street now with the ramps and having the having the lakeshore there in its current condition, it, how is that for people that may be living on the south side? Last and question. I want to move up and go. Yes, down. I agree with the uh, description of uh, both uh, Mr. Bedford and Mr. Kirkland that it is bad now and it will be very much worse with additional ramps put in there. Uh, although um, the Keating Channel precinct was planned with the existing um, elevated road in place, the ramps have made it just that much worse as it, as it affects this area. 
the alternative of the widened lake shore, uh, I think, is one that we would see as much more desirable, uh, accepting the descriptions that have been given of it being comparable to university. But more importantly, from a pure process perspective, that was thoroughly examined by your staff yes. when they brought to you the recommendation for the take the road down to grade, widen it, and make it uh, a boulevarded lakeshore last year, as was um, the staff recommendation at that time. So we're satisfied it will be safe and it will likely be beautiful. Councillor Perks. Thank you, uh, Ms. Pepino. Hello. Hello. Um, could, I, I'm not sure I understood. You're at what stage in the process with your client and, and uh, their development application? We are, I'm an optimist, this far from settling three years of an appeal. And we have worked very hard, and I want to acknowledge that um, Kyle Kanok, who's here, and uh, Chris Glasick, and representatives of Waterfront Toronto and the city have been very deeply involved in refining plans. We're not increasing density, but we've just been refining the plans to ensure that it is satisfactory to all. And um, have it. Okay, thank you. Um, th that's my question. Okay, thank you. Was there anybody else? Councillor Carroll. Yes, so in your deputation, you talk about the zoning that you're talking about is 5 million square feet that are zoned for, for CNI development. That's over and above what would happen on the first Gulf site or including? Over and above. First Gulf is in a different precinct. It's on the right. other side of the river. I'm speaking right. only of Keating Channel precinct, which goes from existing Cherry mm -hmm. all the way over to the, the uh, slip next to the bungee site. Okay, and so one of the, the one of the the, the principal um, um, representatives for, for development interest is is Erden Burles, the film that uh, that you're partnered in. Um, you've seen C and I coming back to the downtown. I believe your firm has represented some of the major uh, commercial interests moving back into the downtown core. So have you, have you zoned this having accurate forecasts that say that while, while we're uh, um, about to make this 5 million square feet available, is there a demand for it? Yes, I, I, of course there is. And in fact, I, I just wish to underscore the, um, the process, which was that this was a city-initiated, waterfront Toronto-supported planning process. It was not initiated by my clients. This was driven by the city as part of their planning, so they are the ones who determined the densities and the general block layouts, et cetera. So to answer more generally, um, something like this area is going to have to be phased. We are all, as First Gulf is, dependent on getting the planning documents finally in place, mm -hmm. which is why we don't want to see Keating Channel reopened and sent back to the drawing board. Right. Uh, from a planning perspective. It is also contingent on getting the necessary flood proofing done right. and the other infrastructure in place. But over the period recognizing that those things will happen as the phasing of construction happens, a uh, concomitant with that, yes, the market will of course be there. The city and Waterfront Toronto were convinced of that four years ago when they enacted these documents. And one more question, Madam Chair. When you say at that and other infrastructure, when, when clients are looking for, uh, uh, for takers, when they've got commercial and industrial land to develop, particularly commercial and office space, are they looking for stuff with maximum flexibility and transit options to get workers to their places? I think for, to answer your question, the old adage of location, location, location has been, trans, has been transmogrified into location with transit, location with transit, location with transit. For certain few um, industries, those which um, have just-in-time delivery and the like, there is the necessity for having road access, no question about it. I do believe that within the next 10 to 15 years, the city is going to have to come to grips with how it manages those sorts of things, perhaps going the route of New York and saying you only get to deliver after uh, the p.m. rush hour and before the a.m. rush hour, or ways other right. things have happened in other cities around the world. Mm -hmm. But the key thing for location of office workers particularly is access to transit. 
Yes. Thank you. I think okay, Councillor Holliday's next. Oh, Con Councillor Campbell just put up his hand and then we'll move to Holliday. No, go ahead, Councillor Campbell. All right. That's fine. Can you just, uh, hello. Hello. Uh, could you just explain to me uh, how the lands for the companies which you represent, how they will be impacted by the hybrid solution as opposed to what's, what the situation is now? What's yes, the difference? Yes, be happy to. I'm not quite getting that. That's all right. You were out of the room when, when it was asked. So I did rush back so that I could hear you, though, Thank just you so you know much. that. Thank okay. you that. Um, the lands that are owned by 3C, my client, run from what will be the extension of Trinity Street over to roughly this location, which is the existing Cherry Street. This on the map shown as Cherry Street is in fact the planned relocated Cherry Street which will move to the west. Mm. So at the moment where this ramp is intended to come here, it goes right through development site, two, pro probably two development sites, we're not exactly sure, and takes out the water's edge promenade which was has been planned to extend all across the front of this entire um, precinct and link to the east. I hope that's helpful. It is helpful. So, and, and so, how many how many companies are you representing? That, that what's there now? Right there at the moment, there is on the three C lands, which is the most easterly fourteen acres. Mm -hmm. There is nothing. That is the place that's the old Home Depot site okay. or the Tent City site. It's been called. It's where the big tents come. So this is all about the town. impact of future development then? Yes. Okay. And to the west of that is what's called the silo site. Right. To the west of that is Waterfront Toronto lands. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And then we're on, on, on to Councillor Holliday. Yeah, I, thank you, Councillor Campbell. I think you scooped me on what I was uh, mm. aiming at clarifying. I'm um, looking at an aerial map listening to your discussion and looking at the maps here and I'm just trying to reconcile exactly the site. I think, based on the aerial map, the tip of the arrow that says Bathurst Key Extension is the bottom of uh, the street right now and it swings upward and becomes Cherry Street. I think that would be the Queen's Key Extension. Sorry. Um, I apologize. Queen's Key Extension. Okay. Reading on an angle. That's right. Is, would that be correct? That that more or less. If you move that arrow slightly further to the east, then you just about have the existing Cherry Street location. Because as I'm, you may know, it's not a straight line. It kind of bends a little bit. But yes, we're in we're in the area for sure. Okay. So so you own from Cherry Street and where it curves. Yes. And then you own up to the Gardener, which is the dotted line. On that photo of the lakeshore. You don't own under the gardener. To the lakeshore. We own to the, the lakeshore, lake yes. Okay. And then and down to the Eating Channel and west to the extension of the of Trinity Street. Okay. Now you mentioned you, you took exception to the ramp, which I understand. That that clips off corner of the site and it goes even further by the looks of it to the cherry to to the new Cherry Street and, and it's I guess is proposed to be a park, purchase the land, become a park, uh, to facilitate those ramps. Do you take concern with the position of Cherry Street, the new position of Cherry Street? That was decided by an environmental assessment years ago. Okay, so not, that's not that's, ours to question. So that's not it, because it looked to me from both proposal maps, they are the same. Cherry Street. They is, are the same. It, th that's been fixed by NEA. Okay, so so the, the heart of your concern is the corner on that map where the ramps run through and the park. As, as well as all the way up to where the ramp meets and comes up to level with the elevated portion simply because that comes even closer to my client's land than the existing infrastructure does today. Okay. It may in fact hang over our lands. We don't know. <laughs> Just on the other side of Cherry Street, the proposed Cherry Street and the park. Just that upper left hand corner of the, of the ramp. I, I think I would say that and the impact on the north part if you look at the red line, yep. that is a ramp which was, no, was not previously intended to be there and for all we know, and we don't know yet, that could impinge above the lands that are owned by my client to the west of the new Cherry Street. Thanks very much. Okay, we, oh, Councillor Moser, go ahead. 